to give an account, the answer to this question is found in the pages of the pages of God's holy word. With an uh, with an open mind and in Bibles in hand, let us see what the word has to say about this coming judgment. So there are many verses in Bibles that it, it refers what it refers to it talks about the rewards, especially in Matthew 10, 42. Sinabi dito, and whosoever give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, not only the name of the disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall no wise lose his reward. It is clearly also mentioned in Matthew 6, 4, that thy land alms may be, may be in secret, and thy father will see it in secret himself, shall so reward thee openly. So it's many times here, it's numerous times, it is mentioned in the Bible, it's not just this few verses I mentioned, that there is literally a reward. So in Corinthians 2, chapter 5, notice that all of the participants of this judgment, this judgment is not for everyone in the world. This particular judgment is for the child of God, in other words, believers, the one who accepts Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I hope we are clear about that. And then I hope that each one of us here accepted the gift of the salvation of our Lord. Otherwise, we're going to the next room, which is the next, the great white room. So when we, so the unsaved world will face the Lord of judgment, which is the great white throne. When we notice the purpose of this judgment, we are being judged for salvation. No. This uh, great white throne judgment is done in heaven. After the rapture, there are two events that will occur in heaven. It's either I cannot say it's one is a one in a one in a uh, judgment seat of Christ and the wedding supper of the Lamb. Okay, so we notice the purpose of this judgment. That this, this, this judgment has been settled before the judgment takes place. That we are being judged for our sins. No, this, these sins were judged in Calvary. And we were guilty and we were found guilty. And that's the time our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. Those sins have been already been paid for. By Yatna. It's done for us. The only, need, the only thing we need to do is to accept the salvation, the gift of salvation. For what? Then, we are being judged. We are being judged for our service to our Lord. When we say service to our Lord, what are these? So many things. Madami dito, we include the ministry in the church and our relationship to others. So we mean, at madami pa. When we say service, we preach the word, we do the the great commission. Dahil yun ang pinag-uto sa atin ng Panginoon. That's what's been uh, told to us na gawin natin. Meron tayong service sa Panginoon na dapat gawin. Not just a church goer who come here every Friday and after that we will see you back in Friday. Of course, you are saved. You accept the Lord as our personal Lord and Savior. But where is your service to the Lord? The word just brings back, brings up bad connotation. When we hear the word judgment, the, first, the very first thing comes into our mind is that did we do something wrong? Or are we going to be judged because we did something right? As we come to the passage in 2 Corinthians 5, we are reminded how Paul offered an illustration, of a new illustration of the Greek Olympics in comparison. Para hindi natin mapag-isipan kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng judgment. So that 
we will not be misled what the meaning of this judgment, what Paul is teaching. He wanted his readers to have some way of understand, to, to understand what he is writing. The judgment seat of the judgment seat mentioned here, which is the Bema seat, is one another than the place where the victorious Olympian will come to receive a lawyer or writ in a place of honor. This is what you, ito'y nakikita natin mga dahon, isang writ. Ito'y binibigay sa mga Olympian. This is what's given to the Olympians or even in the early Olympic days. Sa lahat ng mga nagwagay, for those who, who uh, conquered victory, this one served as a reward. So with that thought, with that thought in mind, we understand that we're not being judged for every wicked things that we have done in our life. So we're not going to be judged according to our wrong deeds, to our sin. Uusgan tayo sa kasalanan natin. We will have to see our lives, uh, we will not have to see our lives we played on the big screen. Kinita natin sa kinin natin, no, hindi mangyayari yun. For our shame, those sins have already been judged in the cross. Christ is seen here judging or rewarding for us in service of Him. He will look at the two things, our words and our motives. If you listen carefully this morning about the message, it's all about our service to the Lord. What drives us to, uh, to serve the Lord? It's love. Amen. Not by any mere purpose that we should impress any other people here that how good creature you are. Or how good we deliver the message is. There should be love. Whatever iba, there should be love. That is according to uh, 1 Corinthians 3.13 and 1 Thessalonians 2.4 and also Ephesians 6.6. I would like to read that to yourself a lot. We can be assured that our motives are just important as our deeds, if not mere so. Christ is just concerned with the way He is in one of, of our actions. So as we continue to look at the Bema seed, we also notice the product of this judgment. As we judge for our service and faithfulness to Him, He in return as a reward for those who have been found faithful, just like the Olympians who have received the Nobel with and deserve honor. So we have five crops mentioned in the New Testament of the Christian to win. Every child of God should be familiar with these crowns and should have a set of goals with them all. So sinabi dito mga highlight, products. When we say the word, there's a physical thing na ibibigay sa atin. It's not mentioned it's, it is like or it's kind, but this one is a physical. It's a product. Every time we read the Bible, it mentioned about the crowns. It mentioned about the rewards. So we're talking about here the crowns, which is which is our five crowns. So we're going to uh, enumerate one of these. The first is the crown of righteousness. If we're going to read First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy, chapter four, verse eight. Henceforth, here is laid up me for a crown of righteousness, which the Lord and the righteous, righteous judge shall give me at that day, not unto me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. So I think, look, this crown has been given to us to those who love appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anong ibig sabihin na ito? The one who anticipate the coming of our Lord. The one who prepare or anxiously wait for the coming of our Lord. And what else? All the righteous people. Second is the, the crown of life. In Revelation 2 then, this is the martyr's crown. It is also given to those who overcome temptation according to James 1 verse 12. Because to do so, we have also died for ourselves. When we say the martyr, these are the, the people, the believer, who died for the name of the Lord. 
not just for physical death, but also for the living one, the living believers who who died daily for the for the service of the Lord. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is the one who denied himself, who loses time, who give his time, who give his who is a who give his a his time and everything, all, all that time, we don't need to give some money. We die for ourselves every day. If you really to love our Lord Jesus Christ and serve Him, so this is the crown of life. The incorruptible crown, the third one. That is according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 25. This crown is given to those who exhibit temperance or motivation in their life. This involves temperance in all areas of life. As we are to be testimony and the light to those who around us. What do we mean the word temperance? Sa Tagalog, pagtitipi? Pagtitiis? Ano pa? What else? Pagpipigil? Abstinence? Sa buhay natin, in our life, there's so many temptations in our life. It can be a, an opposite sex. It can be a, a physical thing. It can be a possession. So what we say in temperance, we need, to, we need to keep ourselves to be satisfied in the level that we must realize that His grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Next is the crown of rejoicing. This crown is reserved for the soul winner. For those who have given their lives to reach and win people to Christ according to the Philippians 4 1. The reason, the reason it is called a crown of rejoicing because there is no greater joy than being used of God to win someone in Christ. Amen. Sino sa atin dito hindi pa nakakapagsolve win? I assume na natin nakakapagsolve win. We deliver the word of Christ to each and every one of us. Sa mga friends natin, sa mga kaibigan natin, sa family natin. There is a great joy na masasave sila. We're talking about the spirit na masasave away from hell. Hindi magbibigay natin yung joy. We cannot give a money to our country, to our, to our parents, and then we're happy about it. But in return, they're lost. Their souls is lost. So this is the crown of rejoicing. I hope everyone feels the same with joy as everyone who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord used you na magamit, na magamit ka ng Panginoon. The fifth one is the crown of glory. This crown is the shepherd's or the pastor's crown given to anyone who helped leads people in one word of God Word of God, it is not reserved solely to the pastor. Every child of God should be involved teaching someone else. That's according to 1 Timothy, Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. So we're talking about crowning pastor. But sinabi dito that hindi lang ang pastor, each and every one of us should be involved preaching the Word of God. Okay, sinabi sa Bible ng babae should not be preached Sa, sa, sa church. But there is no, pero kung wala nang iba, but, but there is no other guy. Just like my wife is planning and she's going to Philippines this month. She wants to teach with our loved ones. And there are no other guys. I will not be with her. So I believe that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's, that, 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 that is the right thing. A woman will teach to her to his loved ones. So finally, we notice the perspective of this judgment. Our lives in our daily walk with the Lord. In the light of His coming judgment, what should our life reflect? Ano ba dapat yung makikita natin sa, ano makikita dapat sa atin ng ibang tao? We're talking about our testimony. Should there be an impact that is made kept this coming event in mind? Like I uh, mentioned many times, I'm, I'm standing in the pulpit 
should that you should not lose it's really hard to preach the word of God dahil iba pa po sa inyo wala na nakikita sa inyo you will look hypocrite among them so the answer of this question is simple in the light of this judgment as well as the coming of the Lord we should live our life in holiness and godliness do I make myself clear? Amen. 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 We have the incentive to be able to have something to give back to our Lord for what He has done for us. Ano yung bagay na pwede namin ibalik sa Panginoon? Look around us. He provides us a planet, a perfectly placed planet on the solar system na kung malapit sa araw, masusunog, malayo, magigilo. It is perfect. Binigay sa atin ito. It is given to us. Ano ba? Ang ating mga mga provisions every day. A shelter. A family. What else can you give back to our Lord? So these are the words and terms we will receive. We will give it back to Him. Remember, imagine you're in heaven. And you can see all this glowiness of His appearance and the place He provided for you. A mansion being provided for you, and you will live with him eternally. You might think, Lord, you deserve this crown. I don't, I don't think that you're going to keep it, or uh, you're walking in heaven and having those crowns. But it's like I said, sa lahat ng experience natin, all the things that we're going to experience in heaven. It will take eternity to experience our Lord. So thirdly, by focusing the return of Christ and the judgment, we will naturally develop a willingness to serve God rather than man. We need to be careful about this. Because once we are departed from this place, we should look for another church. We will serve God still, but we need to keep our mind to guard our thoughts that what we are serving for. Because there are many churches in Philippines, back in the Philippines, that they are serving more the teacher or the priest or the pastor doing other things and they are trying to honor them because there are so many even cults. We are not talking about cults here. And they are mentioning the name of Jesus Christ. We need to guard our minds here when, when the time comes that we need to depart from this place. This is the word of which we receive in our life are only temporal. Pagsamantala. Wag tayo magiging masaya o magiging content, magiging magmagasam na mas malaki pa sa anong binibigay sa ating Panginoon. Dahil ang tanging ito ay pagsamantala lamang. As the years goes by, they will be forgotten. Just like the trophies we win in a game. The medal has been hung to our neck soon it will be dusted and will be thrown in the garbage. No one will keep that for you for the next generation. It's just for a short time being that you will glorify yourself that you have this. But now, the next year, the second year, probably the next decade will be in the trash. This is the word given by Christ are eternal. When we say eternal, habang buhay. Habang buhay. How are you investing in your time? I'm asking you, believers, in temporal or eternal matters. We should ask ourselves, what are, what, are we do, what are we doing serving our Lord? After we leave this place, our mission feels already in that gate. We should reach our other people serving God and delivering His word to non-believers. Especially to the members of this church, I encourage you, especially the men, to be involved in the ministries. Because there are so many, many places here in Qatar that are lacking of Bible studies, but Bible study leaders. As you live your life, do so with knowledge that you will give an account for your service to the Lord. 
Do not lose your reward because of unfaithfulness. Never backslide. Be true and committed until he returns. This judgment, this judgment is in your chance to give something to the Lord for all that He has given to you. It's all right to lose a few things in this life as long as we're striving for the crown and heaven. But I really like to have an open conversation with you. With the help of our pastor, if you have a question, I encourage you to ask. Anyone? May I have a question? Pastor, maybe it's better I give it to Pastor. That was quick. Okay. Uh, we have questions tayo. So, again, kailangan na di ba kung says this study to show what? Thyself. Thyself. Approve that to God. God. A workman that need that not rightly dividing the word of truth. So, dapat it is rightly divided. We had our Bible study last uh, Monday. We started another Bible study at uh, Sailia with a group of uh, Ghana friends. There are over 100 of them and a lot of Kenyans there. Uh, so we went to the room and we were having this Bible study. And it's really difficult. Brother Ray, you prepared because this coming Monday you will be there in that room. Okay. Uh, the other group is asking me to visit them, so I'm not changed by one another. But we just uh, take the Bible. Eh? They are confused about the judgment. Akala nila, pag namatayan ng isang tao, parang ang kaluluwa nila, yung tinatawag na soul sleep. And so we were having this discussion, and finally I said, how many judgments in the Bible do you know? And he said, one. And I said, that's the problem. Okay, that's the problem. So, dapat, uh, ano yung unang judgment? The judgment of the believer. Sa cross yan. Okay? We are found what? Guilty. Okay? So, we must pay for our sins. Di ba? A soul that sin and it shall die. A soul that sin and it shall die. For the wages of sin is death. So, but the good thing was, somebody paid for our sin. Sin is God. The Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verse 15, verse 16, verse 18, verse number 36. If you believe in Jesus Christ sincerely, okay, you put your absolute trust in Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says, He that believeth is not what? Condemned. Condemned. Say, if you truly believe in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, you're already judged. The Bible says, He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are judged. That means, okay, God already made his judgment. You are not condemned. You are no longer going to hell. So you are important judgment. Atong ko sa salvation natin yan. Now, after that, after you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, do you still sin? Yes. Do you still have the ability, capacity yes. to sin? Yes, yes we do. Is there anyone here na hindi na nagkakasala? Even the Apostle Paul, what did he say? The things that I would, that I do not, and the things that I would not, that I do. Okay. So, paano naman yung kasalanan na gawa natin after na tumanggap tayo sa Panginoon? That falls to the second judgment. And that is called the judgment of the believers so, when does that uh, happen? From the time you get saved until you go home. We go home by death or by the rapture. That's what I'm saying. Okay, the Lord will take us either by death or His second coming. Okay? So, from the time you get saved until you go home to heaven, ito yung time na uh, pwede tayong magawa ng salana. What sin did you do yesterday? Ano yung mga naisip mo na hindi dapat naiisip? Ano yung mga sinasabi natin sa ating mga bunganga na hindi natin dapat sinasabi? Ano yung mga tinitignan natin na hindi natin dapat tinitignan? What are those things? Okay? Now, what does the Bible say? Hebrews chapter what? 
12, verse number 5, down to verse number 13. The Bible says, Whom the Lord loveth, he what? Chasing him. He is virgin, every one, son whom he visited. If ye are without chastisements, what of all our partakers, then you are what? Bastards and not sons. So, uh, ano yung araw ng Panginoon? Pag nagkasala tayo, pinabawin niya yung kaligtasan natin? No. No, he doesn't do that. Okay? What happens is that, pinapalo tayo ng Panginoon. What are the tools of his chastisement? How does God spank us? That is one sign that you are a child of God. If he, cha if he chastens you, pag pinapalo tayo ng Panginoon. One, there is the possibility of losing our joy. We preach that one time here. And then you can also lose your fellowship. Your health. You can also lose your wealth or material possessions. You can also lose your uh, a loved one. Or you can even lose your life prematurely. Sin unto death, ang tawag dyan. So, kung pinakalo ng Panginoon, the Bible says rejoice. Because that is an indication that you are a child of God. So, pangalawa yan. First, you have the judgment of the believer. That is your salvation. Second is the judgment of the believer self. Ang hinahatulad dyan is yung ating nagagawang kasalanan. Now, you have the judgment seat of Christ, or otherwise known as the Bema judgment. Yung sinasabi niya na sa Isthmian Games, sa Olympics nila nung araw, merong elevated na katulad nito, Lahat ng mga tumakbo, lahat ng mga participants, ilalagay dyan. Hindi pa sila mag-declare na may nalaga. Ini-scrutinize siya kung meron silang denialate na mga rules dun sa laro. Yan. Nauna ka nga dun sa finishing line, pero yung may limited sa rules. Hindi pa rin sila mag-declare na, ano, na winner. Okay. So this is the judgment seal of Christ. This is a judgment for whom? Para sa mga believers. Maraming palataya. Ano mahahatulan dito? Yung ating mga works, whether they be good or bad. Okay? Good or bad what? Motives. Alimbawa, nagbigay ka. Is it good? Pero nagbigay ka in order to be seen of people. See? The, the why or the what is just as important as the why. Why you do what you do is just as important as what, no, what you did. Anong ginawa mo? But what was your motive? So, kung may motive ka, alimbawa, may motive to be seen of men. You do things because you want to have the praise of men. The Bible says you already have your reward. See? But if you are doing, if you are serving the Lord with the right motive, then that will be the one that's in there. Maybe people will recognize you for that. Hindi yun ang pinaka-purpose mo. Then you have no good reward. Okay? Uh, you are rewarded by people because you are a blessing to them. But that was not your intention. So in heaven you will be rewarded. So, yun yung mga rewards doon. And there are five. Yung mga rewards natin will be in the form of crowns. You have the crown of righteousness. That is the soul winner's crown. No. Uh, yun yung yung mga those who anticipates the what? May relation ito ah. The appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you think to yourself, maybe today Jesus Christ is coming back. So, what do you do? Will you live in sin? No. Maybe the Lord is coming this way, so I better live a holy life. He didn't come this way. Okay, maybe it's this coming way. So, if you keep on anticipating the return of Christ, ang resulta niya is, you will not live carelessly. And because of that, you will live a righteous life. No? So you will be receiving the crown of righteousness. And the second one is what? Crown of life. life. Blessed is the man, James 1, 12, that in dual temptation, for when he is right, he shall receive the what? Gusto mo yung, gusto nyo yung crown na yan? Do you want the crown of life? Then ask the Lord to give you temptations. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you will have one now. Okay? Kung patsukok sa buhay. Yeah. So, when you have a trial, uh, always think of this. It's your opportunity to earn another reward. What is the third crown? The crown of? Incorruptible. I want to emphasize this. Your incorruptible crown. 
That is, again, I call this crown as you crown uh, that will be awarded to believers who are willing to do anything for God. Kaya dapat alamin niyo yung context dito. 1 Corinthians 9.25 Okay, 1 Corinthians 9.25 Just a review before kayo magtanong kayo na review, okay? Now, look at this. Verse 24 muna. Know ye not that they which are in a race run all? But one received the prize, so run that he may obtain. Verse 25. And every man that is prepared for what? For the mastery. What does that mean? If you want to be a victor, if you want to be the champion, let's say Mani Pacquiao, is what? What do you do? Is tempering in all things. If your friends will say, you're a boxer, you're a boxer, you want to be a champion, and then many of your friends, they will say to you, ah, let's have a, let's have a, let's have a, let's have a, what will you say? Because many of them, you are, you have a goal. Your goal is to win that box, box, boxing match. And so if you do not discipline yourself, sige dito, sige dito, sige dito, kahit saan kaya yakin, okay, 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 it's all pakisama, pakisama. How would you expect na magiging victor ka? So for you to be able to, uh, for you to be a victor, uh, you have to say no to a lot of things. No to vices, no to cigarettes, no to drinking, no to drugs, no. Say, why? Because you have a goal in mind. The, the Bible, the term here is mastery. Now they do it, the Bible says, to obtain a practical ground. Why are they doing that? In order for them to win the belt. Okay? Kung ano man yung price na binibigay. But we, the Bible says, on what? Incorruptible ground. So you see an athlete who is willing to do anything, sacrifice anything, because of the goal. He wants to be a master. He wants to be a victor. He wants to be the champ. And so the Christian will also do that. Uh, you want to earn the, the crown. And so you have to say no to this. Somebody will say, let's go to this on Friday. No, no, no. We have church. Okay? Let's do that. I cannot do that. Why? You are aiming for a crown. So you have the crown of righteousness, you have the crown of rejoicing, and then you have the crown, the incorruptible crown, what else? The crown of rejoicing that is the soul with this crown. See? Because there is joy in heaven uh, over one soul that repented. And you also have the crown of glory. The crown of glory. Who is the judge during the uh, during the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. How did you know that? Bakit? Huh? The judgment seat of? Matangino ka pala na? I think it's your using your head, no? Uh, what about the great white throne? Hindi naman siya namin great white throne of Christ. Sino ang judge doon? What about during the judgment of the nations? Judgment of the believer, judgment of the believer's self, judgment sin of Christ, judgment of the Jews, tribulation period, the judgment of the nations after the tribulation period, judgment of the angels and the great white throne judgment. Look at the Bible, John 5, 22. John 5, 22. For the Father judged no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the unto the Son. Okay, the Son is, anong, anong mo upset nyo sa Son? Capital letter S. And, uh, sinong tinutukoy dyan? The Lord Jesus Christ. So, all the judgments, the judge will be our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, may, baka mayroon tayong mga questions na nice to clarify. I cannot promise you must have mga questions, but let us this. If not me, somebody else can probably answer. Brother, of all people, eh, you should be the one answering the question. Okay. But go ahead, brother. And then, how about the last paragraph of the last paragraph of the sentence? You do not lose rewards because of unfaithfulness. Does it mean that? But not your salvation. 
31 dias. 